Now we consider the cumulative distribution function, CDF, and the probability density function, PDF. One is the distribution function, uh, uh, is the cumulative probability distribution function, or in short, CDF. So what is the CDF? CDF defines the probability of being less than or equal to a given value. Equal is included. And this is why we call it cumulative, because it accumulates all the previous numbers. Usually, we, we write as capital F, or random variable capital F to stand for the distri cumulative distribution function. And then the subscript would be the CDF, or the random variable itself, X, Y, or Z. The small letter is uh, or indicates the parameter value. Now, in the experiment of flipping three coins, or flipping a coin three times and counting the number of heads, uh, the CDF evaluated at 2 means find the probability of being 2 or less than that number. For that specific example and distribution, we have the following expression, probability of the CDF at 2 equal to the probability of being less than or equal to 2, which includes 0, 1, or 2. And if you substitute the numbers, we get 7 over 8. Now, going with the example, of tossing the coin three times and sketching the CDF. We have seen one example for the CDF at two, but in general, if you look at the probability distribution, we can use the CDF as such. At zero, it's equal to eight. At one, the CDF will accumulate the two, so it becomes one over eight plus three over eight, which give you one half. At two, it's going to be seven over eight, and at 3, it's going to be 1. So if you would like to sketch this, here's how it looks. This is a, not a very perfect or accurate drawing, but uh, we'll see the more exact drawing. So we start with 0. At the first possible outcome, it goes up like a staircase. And finally, it accumulates to 1. Now, for any distribution functions, for any cumulative distribution function, or in short, distribution function, there are some properties. First one, the accumulation at minus infinity should be zero. At infinity, it should be one because we have accumulated all possibilities. This, this sounds like um, intuitive. At three, uh, or the property number three, anything between these two values, between zero and one, anything for values of x between minus infinity and plus infinity, we get a value between 0 and 1. And also, we we notice that the CDF, because it accumulates, it's a non-decreasing function. It either stays as is or increase. Mathematically, you would say that if x1 is less than x2, then you also expect the CDF at x1 to be less than or equal to the CDF at x2. If you want to find the probability of, between two values, notice, be careful about the equal sign here x is greater than x1 and less than or equal to x2, then the CDF will be, uh, if you subtract the CDFs, you get the probability. Number six, the CDF is always continuous from the right, or right continuous function, which means if you have a discontinuity, okay, like in our case here, it, you're going to pick the higher value. Why? Because the definition of the CDF says greater than, or uh, less than, or equal. So it includes the previous value. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the diagram at the, at the top, this is a more accurate way of representing our previous example. Instead of showing a staircase direct, at any discontinuity, we should show that the value is included in the upper value because it's a non-decreasing function. And if just to recall the previous example, which is the previous drawing, which is not accurate, it's shown here on the side. So this one is more accurate. This is less accurate or not correct. But sometimes we just do it for uh, simplicity. Okay. Now, uh, two notes from property number four, uh, CDF is non-decreasing function. And if you want to test whether this CDF or distribution function, in short, 
uh, is valid or not you can use property number one two three uh, number one two four and six this can be used to test four and six one two four and six All right now uh, back to the example back of the example of tossing three coins we can find the we notice that always the CD is a staircase function. If you want to write the expression, so we get the first probability times u of x. X is our random variable. X is the um, the operator or the small letter of the random variable, plus uh, the other property probability at x equal to one shifted at that location. So as if you are adding unit step functions. So if you would love to write this in terms of mathematical expression, this is how we do it. We take every probability and we scale by the unit step function shifted at the proper location. In general, we can say that the CDF can be written as a summation of probabilities shifted to the proper functions. Okay. Again, in general, um, the number of possibilities could be infinity, so a capital N can be infinity. And sometimes for the shorthand notation, instead of saying the probability of, of the random variable equal to x, we can just say that the probability of being x i or specific outcome. All right, now that we have explained the cumulative distribution function CDF, it's time to explain the probability density function or in short PDF. PDF is the derivative. PDF is the derivative of the distribution function or the cumulative distribution function f of x. Mathematically, you can have the following relation. We represent the BDF with a small letter f, the random variable in the subscript, and a small letter of the random variables as an operator. In our discrete uh, random variable example, since the CDF is sum of unit step functions, you expect the BDF to be sum of delta functions. If you want to do it slowly, you take the derivative of the CDF, everything here, and you take the derivative of operator inside, so you get the derivative here, the derivative of unit step function, because these are numbers, the derivative of uh, the unit step function would be nothing but uh, the delta function. So if the CDF is made of sum of unit step function, the BDF will be very similar, except you replace the unit step function with the delta function or the impulse function. Additional examples for the CDF and the PDF. Okay, uh, this one is uh, CDF. The associated PDF is this. If you take the derivative of this function, you'll find whenever we have a horizontal line, you get zero, zero. For these discontinuities, you'll get impulses. The area of these impulses is related to how much is this discontinuity. So you can see that the length of the arrow or the length of the impulse is related to the amount of discontinuity. Another example, just to show you that uh, how a stair function, staircase function in terms of CDF will look like a sum of deltas in terms of PDF. For the continuous example, um, the CDF will look like uh, this is like a new form distribution, or uh, we'll talk about that later on. But for the following shape, if you take the derivative, the slope is here zero, the slope here is zero. And the slope for this area is just one constant number. So from A to B, it's zero outside, and it, it's equal to a constant number, which equal to the slope, difference in Y divided by difference in X. All right. Now, what are the properties of the, of the density function? We have seen properties for CDF. What are the properties for the density function? First, uh, it's always a positive quantity or equal to zero. So it's equal or greater than zero for all values of x. The second property is the following. Um, it is, um, uh, of course, for the first one, the reason it's always positive because it's a derivative of an undecreasing function. So you expect always to get uh, an unnegative answer because it, if it was decreasing, you get a negative, but if it, because it's non-decreasing, the CDF, when you differentiate, you get a non-negative answer. The area under the CDF should always equal to 1. This is very important. Now, 
the relation between the CDF and the PDF. CDF is the integral of the PDF. If you want to file to find the value at x, you integrate from minus infinity to x. Not the difference between these two integrals. This is from minus infinity to infinity, you get always one. But if you want to find the CDF for a given value, you integrate up to that value from minus infinity up to x, and this is just a dummy variable, you get your you, you get the value of the CDF. Of course, uh, if you put infinity here, you get uh, 1. So the CDF would equal to 1 at infinity. This is We have seen this property before. If you want to find the probability for a range of values between x1 and x2, and remember the, that we here we have greater than and less than or equal to, this is because of the definition of the, of the CDF. Uh, you need to integrate from x1 to x2 because this is just density. It will not give you probability. You need to integrate the density to get the probability. Saying it in a different way, for the probability of x being between two values equal to the difference between the CDFs, if you write the integral form, you get the following expression. Now, property number one and property number two are usually used to prove whether a, whether a PDF is a valid function or not. Additional examples, example number one, somebody is defining a, a random variable to map the outcomes of the sample space, which is from minus four to 12. Okay, he, these are numbers already, but the random variables would like to convert them into a different numbers. According to the following formula, minus two, the outcome would be minus two. If your value is minus two, two, it's equal to i if it's between minus two and one, 1 if it's between 1 and 4, and 6 if it's greater than that. So I just want to, to draw a relation between i, the input here, the x-axis. These are the input values. And we have the output values on the y-axis. So uh, if the value is minus 2, if the input is less than minus 2, always the output would be minus 2. And similarly, if it's greater than 4, it's always constant. In this region, we have a linear relation. The outcome will remain as is. So this diagram is a mapping of the expressions. And that's basically the first question. So it's show the mapping between the random variables. To show it in a different way, if you look at the lower curve here, everything between minus 4 and minus 2 or, or below would, would map into one number. Everything here will map into a range. This is going to map into one number and above four will map also into one number. So the second question of what type of random variable is this? Is it continuous or discrete? Clearly, we have continuous here and we have discrete values. So the answer is mixed random variable. The second example is the sample space of an experiment. The sample space of an experiment is given to be 0, uh, 1, 2.56. The random variable is defined to be twice that number. So I would like to sketch the density and the distribution function of the random variable. Okay, we need the probabilities, of course. So uh, here is the possible outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 5, uh, and, and 12. These are basically the possible outcomes because you take these numbers, outcome of experiments, you convert them into random variable x by multiplying by 2. So 0 becomes 0, 1 becomes 2, 2.5 become 5 and 6 becomes 12.5 12. Okay, now the assumption we made, the natural assumption is that they are all equiprobable. And because we have four possibilities, we give them the, the magnitude of one fourth. Okay? Now if you want to convert this into a CDF, you need to integrate. So going from the left side, the first delta has a, an area equal to one fourth. And because it's accumulative, accumulation, then we will have a constant value, nothing new. For the next delta, it's going to jump to one half, and then three fourths, and it um, saturates at one when x equal to 12. Here is the third, here is the third example about uh, properties of the PDF. Now, it says in the example that determine the real constant A for arbitrary real constant M and P greater than zero, such that the following is a valid density function, a valid PDF. This is called, by the way, Laplace uh, density. Remember that we have two tests to do that. 
it would help if we can visualize how this PDF look like. Give yourself uh, a thought about how would this thing look like. Well, it looks like this. It's um, it's centered around M, and it's a decaying exponential from both sides because of the, because of the absolute value. Remember that we we condition B to be positive so that the exponent will be negative. There are two tests to be done to, f to find the value of A or to make it a valid PDF. The first test is that the density function must always be positive and to get the sketch which is always positive, B must be positive. It should be a non-negative function. The area under the curve, the area here, must equal to 1. Now, to find the area, we need to integrate. And to integrate, we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity of the PDF. So from here to here, we substituted the elements. And then to make the thing simple, we're going to change the variable. You can see the color match here, z equal to x minus m over b. Okay. So we'll put z equal to x minus m over p. The differential dx now, if you differentiate both sides, dz would equal to dx over b, which means that dx equal to b times dz. So we're replacing this variable with z. We're replacing the differential with dz times b. So you can see there's an additional b outside. This a from inside goes outside. What remains is the integration limits. When x equal to m, and we substitute in this relation, x equal to m, m minus m equal to 0, so z equal to 0. So the integration limit changes from m to 0. And when x equal to goes to infinity, z also approaches infinity. So hence the integration limits change from m to infinity to 0 to infinity. Now evaluating this differential, uh, differentiation of an integral or integration of an uh, exponent, it's not difficult. You divide by the exponent minus sine and you substitute the limits. So we get the answer to be 2ab. When you put infinity, you get 0, minus, minus, you get 1. So it's 2ab. This 2ab must equal to 1. So and if you put um, 2ab equal to 1, it means that you get 2ab equal to 1. We can write the a in terms of uh, b. So we get a equal to 1 over 2b, which is what we got here. This is an in-class practice, random uh, review of random variables. I'll just uh, go over the example and please write your answers down. So we're shown a PDF with amplitude of A. We're saying the probability density function of a continuous random variable X is shown in the figure. Now determine the value of A, of course for this to be a valid PDF. Find an analytical expression for the cumulative probability density function. Write it in terms of math expression. We're talking about the CDF. Sketch the CDF as function of x. Find the value of the CDF at 0. Does it make sense or not? And finally, determine a numerical value of b for b so that p is greater, uh, probability of x greater than b equal to 0.5 times the CDF at B. So if you find the answer, please write it down and let's check our answers or cross-check our answers. Thank you.